praise the Lord God Almighty from whom all blessings flow. Truly is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our souls make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. It's an honor, it's a privilege to glorify God every day when you wake up in the morning to the setting of the sun to give him praise anyhow. Thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Jesus. We give you glory, God, for this day you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For to be calmly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Lord, I want to be more like you. Lord, I want to be more like you. So you work through. I want to be more like you. Lord, I want to be more like you. Oh, Lord, I want to be more like you. So you work through. I want to be more like you. Lord, I want to be more like you. Lord, I want to be more like you. Wanna be a vessel you work through and I wanna be more like you I wanna be more like you Amen, Amen again. Praise the Lord God Almighty for another blessed day He has created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Welcome to tonight, Tuesday night Bible class. Once we again continue in our book, we left off at talking about the threefold demonic court of Jezebel, how design the lives of Jezebel, Athelia, and Delilah. That's what we're talking about tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you really get a revelation of the goodness of God, you understand that the enemy has no power over you. Whatever you give him, that's where the power comes from. But tonight, we're stripping the enemy of his power and control over our minds, over our hearts, over our wills, over our emotions. We're stripping the enemy of his control, his mind binding spirit of control in our lives as we learn how to continue to walk by faith and not by sight into the promises of God's word. Because one thing about the enemy, he has no power, no charge of even what you give him. And what he wants to do is control you and manipulate you and strip you of your power, your authority. But you have to recognize and identify that you have the power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall be able to hurt you. Nothing can strip you of your power, your authority. Nothing can cause you to turn away from your faith but you. When you choose to stop following the Lord Jesus Christ and being obedient to his word, you give the enemy the power over you to control you and do just what he wants to do in your life. 
to break down your strength to fight against him. Amen. So tonight we're going to be talking about Athalia targets the generations. Athalia targets the generations. Good evening, uh, Pastor Denise. God bless you. Last week we started out in chapter 5 talking about Athalia's reign of terror. And we found out how malicious she had become, just like her mother. How she began to reign over the kingdom of Israel by killing her own descendants. So tonight we're going to pick up talking about generations, how this affects the generations in our lives, in our lives, in our future generation that follows after us. So let's go into a word of prayer and we'll get into our lesson tonight. So grace to God, our Father, I thank you for this opportunity to teach your word again. I pray, God, you give us clarity, give us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge to learn how to discern the lives of Jezebel, Athalia, and Delilah in our own personal lives. Allow you, Lord God, to break the backbone of the enemy off of our life, Lord God, to give us Father God, focus and understand and move forward in our purpose and our calling. No longer be victimized by the enemy of God. But we stand fast in the liberty of Christ made us free. Forgive us for our sins, known and unknown, O oh God, and cleanse for all the righteousness. Remove the business from the day from our minds, our hearts, that we focus on you, God. And I thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. For healing, for those who need healing right now, God, that you touch their bodies. By your spirit, God, release your anointing to bring, Father, strength in the weak, power to the faint, O oh God, and those who need, Father God, deliverance, different areas of their lives, mind, body, spirit, emotions, physically, God, whatever it may be that you touch right now by your anointing, God, to empower them to get through their situations and come out victorious. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen again to God be the glory. God be the glory. In our book, we're talking about Athalia. Again, as we found out last week, that she had the same spirit of her mother to control, to manipulate, to, to murder, to seize the throne. Any way she chooses, even the means killing her own people to get to that position. That's what the enemy does in a lot of people's lives. He does everything in his power to strip you of who you are, and make you doubt your, your God-given ability. When you start giving in to seducing spirits that controls your thought life and keep you in bondage. And that's what the whole purpose of the enemy is to keep you in bondage. And we have to realize what is it in my life is a stronghold? What is it that's controlling my thought life? What is it causing me to lose my focus? And how can I get back on track? Because one thing about God's word, when you study God's word, it gives us insight and understanding. The idea that the sin of one generation can affect the next is found in the Bible, Exodus chapter 34, verse 7, which states that God will punish the children and grandchildren of those who sin up to the third and fourth generation. And that's what God promised. Because God did not tolerate rebellion in the lives of his people anyway. They want to live according to their own standards, their own belief. God is trying to provoke us to get back realigned with the Spirit, to hear God's voice and walk in obedience. So as we get into our book, it says, The Spirit of Jezebel and Athalia are almost identical in nature and deeds. You hear that? They're similar. The spirit of a mother as well as the daughter of Leah 
has the same influence by the enemy. And they both operate in the same mindset of doing anything in their power to become king over Israel. So if we take authority over Athaliah, we can use the same prayer strategy we use against Jezebel. There are, however, two, mind, main, two main differences. First, Athaliah targets and attacks generations of families in order to ultimately destroy people and nations. Throughout history, leaders, mostly men, have targeted the destruction of generations. The Roman Emperor Nero who reigned from 54 to 68 AD, for example, murdered and persecuted thousands of Christians and supposedly burned Rome. He was accused of murdering his own mother and wife and possibly his own advisors. Nero was extravagant and, was, and he propagated beliefs in Greek gods and philosophies of humanism, humanism. So in other words, he, he reproduced the same belief system in those who followed him. Another example is Adolf Hitler, who possessed the demonic ability to seduce the minds of an entire nation to elect him as the leader of Germany, only to rise tyrannical and total dictatorial dictatorial power. Once again, once attaining that power, he legalized genocide in the country he defeated and ruled. He murdered millions of Jews as well as other undesirables such as the mentally retarded minorities and etc. Through Hitler, Satan attempted to destroy all living Jews the destruction of generations while aggressively seeking the world's domination. That's how malicious the enemy is when he wants to control your entire life. He does everything in his power to manipulate, to deceive, to control, to get people to follow after him. Like Jezebel and Athaliah, what they do? They both introduce idol worship to the Israel nation. And they were so, de de so, so deceived and, and so against God when they did not listen to God's voice, but they listened to the voice of the enemy. They allowed this spirit to manipulate and control them, to seduce them, to follow the idol worship, to gain a heart of rebellion against God. Hitler did the same thing. Genocide means to destroy, to, you know, to disrupt the order of God. I mean, that's what the enemy does. He, he wants to destroy everything that you have in your life, right? Look at this. To genocide, the deliberate killing of a large group of people, especially those of particular ethnic groups or nations. So he introduced killing to those different different people. And that's what the enemy does today, the same thing. He'll get you to, to, to prove him, to set him up in an authority position in order to manipulate and destroy you. Through Hitler's Satan attempt to dis destroy all living Jews, and that's what his whole purpose was, destroy all the Jews. Try to, to assassinate the whole nation of, of Israel, the Jewish nation. Though the ambition of Nero and Hitler varied, their underlying motive for power and domination was the same. They both wanted control. And they wanted to set up, like I said before, the death structure in the heart of God's people. Obviously, evil forces were working through these insane leaders, provoking them to perform these evil deeds. Remember that Jezebel's spirit has no gender. This force will use both male and female to accomplish evil assignments upon the earth after Leah as a woman was possessed by the same spirit that later controlled Nero and Hitler.
You hear that? The same spirit. Years before, a thousand years before, it's the same spirit that came along and, and, and seduced Nero as well as Hitler to have a desire to take possession and control God's people. It's a shame when we don't realize and recognize when the enemy comes against us. He comes in subtle ways in your family through other people and other avenues in order to control your mind and lead your strength. Jezebel was determined to seize power in any way she could and became determined to murder the generations after her in order to secure control. After Leah, the same way, the same spirit, the same demonic force that was in, in the mother controls the daughter. And the daughter had the same mindset, the same motive, the same mission order was to destroy generations that would rise up to take the throne from her. Because she wanted that throne and she got the throne. She was going to let anyone violate her authority to get that throne. The significance of Judah. Let's now look at the second difference between Jezebel and Athaliah. Because she was the queen of Judah, Athaliah directly targets all that Judah represents spiritually. What do Judah represent? We, 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 all, we all know um, that in the church setting today, Judah represents praise. We also know the Lion of Judah was Jesus Christ. So, Athaliah Jezebel have the same spirit to assassinate the tribe of Judah. There were 12 tribes of Israel. And each tribe has their place in the Bible as far as in generations. But this particular generation, the lot come from the tribe of Judah, bring forth the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ. Where Athaliah illegally reigned as queen was the area named after Judah, one of the sons of Jacob and Leah, which was Judah. I said the 12 tribes of Israel, they all come from Jacob. The property was inherited for the generations of Judah, a land for the tribe to possess and reign over godly authority. Because it was dedicated to God, it was a place of praise to him. Ain't that something? Judah was designated as a praise to God. And that's amazing because when you realize how important it is God wants to praise, you'd be willing to submit yourself to his authority, to offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving with the fruit of your lips giving him praise. Because it was dedicated to God, it was a place of praising Him. But when Athalia seized control, introduced her idols to the nation, and then destroyed the, the, the legitimate heirs, the generations to the throne, this heir became defiled with idols and false worship. Ain't that something? Because she was so wicked and seized the throne in illegitimacy, she came even to destroy God's place of worship. The enemy of the church today is doing everything in its power to find a way into your life to destruct your tabernacle of praise. Your tabernacle of praise is your heart. And when God says to offer him the sacrifice of things, give him fruit, give him praise, he's looking for you to offer yourself to him as a sacrifice that will produce praise to God. Produce worship to him that God is looking for. He said, this people whom I formed for myself shall show forth my praise. You've been ordained by God to show forth praise. But we don't realize it because we allow the enemy to blind us from seeing who we are and how important we are to God. So why did Satan 
to Athaliah want to destroy Judah. Genesis 49th chapter reveals the prophetic significance of Judah. When Jacob, the father of the 12 sons who eventually became the 12 tribes of Israel, prophesied over each of his sons, he decreed a specific destiny over the descendants of each one. Unlike the prophecies over his other sons, Jacob went to the greater length and detail for Judah. Because out of the tribe of Judah, David's throne would be established as the covenant promise. And later, Jesus, the king of kings, will be born of David's lineage and the, tri the tribe of Judah. And that's something. Because God already set this in motion. He set it in the plan. And he knows if I can stop you from even seeing who you are in Christ Jesus, I can delay the promises and the plan of God for coming to pass in your life. He's looking for a naive group of people who confess to be born again believers, Father Jesus Christ, who are not walking in their potential. You have to know the calling of your life. You got to know what you're called to do in the kingdom of God and allow nothing to distract you from walking in your purpose. Jacob, he prophesied to each one of his, son, his children, the generations, the 12 tribes of Israel, but he knew that Judah was going to be a place of praise. Like it says here, bring forth the lineage of David, which would bring forth the Messiah, the King of Glory. That is so awesome. That is so awesome when you really think about the tribe of Judah, how God knew that the lion's whelp would roar and the enemy would tremble. When Jesus speaks, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, and the enemy trembles at the sound of his voice. Because when he speaks, the world begins to shake at the foundation of his voice. Jesus, so powerful, who came from the lineage of David, who brought forth the Messiah, who is the, the king of glory today in our lives, and when you get a revelation of how important it is to be connected to Jesus Christ, you understand that from the generation before, where he came from, out of Jacob, the tribe of Jacob, or Israel, because God changed Jacob name to Israel. And you see the 12 tribes of Israel was the 12 sons of, of Jacob, who brought forth the descendants, generation after generation that came from this lineage. But the most important one was the lineage of David. Because if it hadn't been for the lineage of David, there would not have been the Messiah. Glory to God. Obviously, the need to reserve the destiny of the tribe was important for the future generations. So you had to make sure nothing would be able to violate this lineage to stop it or cut off from the bloodline. We talked about the bloodline last week because it's very important to realize how some demonic forces that impact your life today have come from some sin of the fathers and forefathers from the generation before you. In your family lineage, you find that there was different type of sinful acts that took place in your family lineage where people have certain strongholds they dealt with and they never cut it off. So it, just like God says, he would punish the children and the children generation of those who sin to the third and fourth generations. Because God knew that if I don't begin to cut off the bloodline of the enemy from this generation, it's going to continue to impact the generations after you. That's why it's important for you as a child of God to get your heart right with God. Once you get your heart right with God, you can teach your children. God told Joshua, it started with Moses, when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. He told them to write the word of God and keep the word of God on the front list of their heads, on their hands, keep the word before them. When Joshua came along and God told Joshua, you're going to leave the children of Israel because Moses had died. You're going to lead them to the promised land. He said the same thing. 
But thou shalt meditate in the word of God both day and night. Keep it in your heart, keep it in your mouth. Do not depart from you. Because he said the word of God will make you successful and prosper you everywhere you go. Because you have to know the word of God for yourself. Study the word. Know what God is saying to you from his word. <coughs> My God. It should then, it should be no surprise then that Athaliah desires to seize the throne and murder generations. That's the reason why she had a strong, strong desire to want to kill generations. Because once her son died, as we talked about last week, once her son died, she had to kill the grandchildren, male children, who were be a threat to the kingdom that she's trying to take control of. So she had to kill off the generation after her to prevent them from coming along to take the throne from her. Through this destructive spirit, Satan was attempting to destroy the, the seed that would ultimately lead to King Jesus. See how all this plays out? Because she thought by her killing her generation, that's going to be the end of the male children in the bloodline. But you're going to find out there's another descendant, which is her daughter, named Delilah, who comes after her. So we're going to find out more later on in our chapter how these, this bloodline was impacted by demonic forces that controlled them and their destiny and eventually cost them their lives. Satan's ultimate goal was to destroy the lineage of our Savior. Satan had a plan from the beginning of time all back to the Garden of Eden. He had a plan if he can get to the bloodline before the Messiah will come. He can stop the Savior from coming. But God had a plan. He had a remedy. Because remember when God cursed the man in the garden and the woman in the garden? He said, he told the woman, he said, you're going to bear children in pain. So the enemy going to bruise your heel, you should bruise his head. Because God deems it so that even though the enemy has plotted and planted from the beginning of time to cut off the bloodline of the Messiah, the Savior, God had to cut the enemy off from destroying the lineage that the Messiah would come from, which was the lineage of David. My God, let's take a closer look at the prophecy and destiny of Judah so we can better understand what Satan was attempting to destroy in Genesis chapter 49. Jacob gives a prophetic blessing. He says, Judah, you are whom your brother shall praise. Your hand should be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people, binding his donkey to the vine and his coat, donkey's coat to the choice wine. He shall wash his garment in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. Than milk. Judas was, was prophesied to be the one who was praised. 
Judah is in Hebrew word translated praise. Praise is an act of worship. Praise is an act of worship. Through songs, worship, prayer, or just expressions, a true service heart praises our Lord for who he is and all he does. Psalm 71, verse 6, verse 14, Psalms 150, verse 2, Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, and Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 14. If you want to write these scriptures down, I'll, I'll leave it on the screen a little longer. But that's why it's so important to have an understanding about praise. Because praise is the atmosphere God is looking for to penetrate the heavens and silence the voice of the enemy. Your praise is your weapon. That way he said his, his hand should be upon the neck of his enemy. Because God already deemed his soul that the Messiah will crush the enemy underneath his feet. And we have to get to the place. Read Genesis, Genesis chapter 49, verse 8 to 12. Put this up on my screen. One second. I hope, I hope this is helping somebody tonight. I hope it's helping you. Okay, in Genesis chapter 49, verse 8 to 12, it says, Judas, shall, Judas thou, shall, thou art whom thy brother shall praise, and thy hand shall be upon the neck of thy enemies, and thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judas the lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up. The scepter shall depart from Judah, no longer between his feet, until Shiloh comes, until, until him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foe unto the wine, and his ass coat unto the choice wine, he shall wash his garments in wine, and his clothes shall be in the blood of grapes. His eyes should be red like with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Zebulun shall dwell at the, ha the haven of the sea. He shall be for a haven of ships, and his borders shall be unto Sidon. So he prophesied about his own children of the destiny God has for their lives. Listen to this. Praise is God's weapon against the enemy. No wonder Satan attacks the praisers. If you are a praiser, you'll find out that the enemy targets you. You have a, tar you have a target on your back. Well, the enemy is going to come against you the hardest because he knows that your praise, it penetrates the atmosphere and it silences the voice of the enemy. Judah's hand was to be on the neck of his enemies. Judah is translated, translated as to throw, to shoot arrows, cast down, and to throw down. This refers to the warfare associated with Judah. Warfare. That's amazing. Because when you become a praiser, you engage in a warfare with the enemy. And the enemy targets you because he knows that when you begin to praise God, he has no choice but to back off from you, to leave you alone. The word Judah is also derived from the root word that refers to the hand and the strength and the power of the hand. Ain't that something? The enemy hates that. He hates when you recognize your authority. It is further linked with the strength in the hand and the portion of the land. In other words, there seemed to be a connection to Judah's strength to conquer, throw down, and to destroy by the strength of his hands. Plus, his hands lies in fulfilling destinies, that is, in possessing his inheritance. 
So what, what's yours, sometimes you got to fight for it. That's what it's talking about. Sometimes you have to fight for your promise, your inheritance. Israel, they have to fight for their promised land. Some enemies they have to fight, and some enemies God led them to victory over without having to fight. Whenever God releases a prophetic destiny, our strength lies in possessing what God gives us. You hear that? that that's something right there. You need to write that down. That, that's amazing. That's amazing. This, this is good right here. Whenever God releases a prophetic destiny, our strength lies in possessing what he gives us. We are given the grace to fulfill destiny. And if we resign to having less, then we easily lose our strength and fulfillment. You hear that? You lose your strength and fulfillment when you start having a desire to follow in God. You stop having your desire. Stop letting the, you start letting the enemy influence your mindset to stop believing who God says you are, what God says you can do, and be who God says you're going to be. You give the enemy power over your mindset to stop you in your tracks from doing what God told you to do to possess your land. God's promises to strength our hands to win the battle and possess our inheritance. For us, our future, and our future generation. So God not only wants you to prosper and possess your promise, but he wants your future generation to inherit the same promises. If you walk in rebellion and disobedience, you're allowing the enemy to stifle your spiritual growth, to stop you from moving forward in your purpose and your calling and be distracted by the sin nature. To be carnally minded is iniquity or enmity with God. It's an enemy of God. Because you're giving your mindset over to wickedness. And you allow the enemy to control your thought life to keep you from walking in your purpose. King David from the tribe of Judah understood this principle as he praised God who trains my hands to war and my fingers for battle. Who subdues my people under me. Psalms 144 verse 1 and 2. Joshua, too, was from the tribe of Judah. Glory to God. This is good. This is really good. And it was he who had a positive report concerning the promised land. One thing about Joshua, if you know the story, he refused to let anything stop him from walking in his purpose. When, when Moses sent the spies out to go spy the land of Canaan, Joshua and Caleb were the only two that came back and says, we're well able to, to go over and take this land. But the 12 spies, the rest of them, came back and said, we look like grasshoppers in the eyes of these people. We can't take them. But Joshua and Caleb were the ones that had a heart to trust God enough to say, we can do it. We can overcome the enemy in this land because we got God on our side. What they were pretty much were saying because they were trusting in God's provision, God's ability to overcome their enemy. We got to stop allowing our enemy to become giants over us. Your enemy only has the power to look and be what you want to be when you magnify your issue over your God. The word tells us, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So if I exalt the name of God, I magnify God bigger than any situation that arises in my life, any issue, any sickness, any disease. It has no power over me than what I give it. We got to speak the word of God. 
and know that if he said he's going to give you the victory, it's already done. It's up to you to receive it by faith. The Lord, therefore, equipped Joshua to lead his people to cross over and possess the promise. Who led them? The Lord. The Lord, therefore, he equipped Joshua. You know what he's talking about? In order to lead you got to have some education. You got to have some wisdom, some knowledge, some understanding. God equipped Joshua with everything he needed to lead the children of Israel to the promised land. Even when it came to fighting with, with weapons, he equipped them with everything they needed to overcome the enemy. If Athaliah had her way, however, neither David nor Joshua nor their descendants would have ever been born. You hear that? If God did not protect your bloodline, you would have never been born. But God saw fit down in the future generations of your life to come that he has something great for you to be in this life and a prophetic word to speak over your life to make you who he wants you to be in your life. Many times, we don't do it with our children. We're telling you, you no know, good, you're just like your mother, just like your father, never gonna mount anything. We speak gloom and doom over our children, which impacts their generation after them. Cause you were so negative, and you poured into your children the negativity, it caused them to see themselves worthless. So it impacted even their children's children. We have to get to the place we not speak death over our children. Even when they get on your nerve. You have to speak the word of God over your children. Speak life that they may live and their descendants may live and obey and follow after the Lord. The goal of this destructive stronghold was to abort the destiny of Judah in all its generations. So the enemy had a plan. The enemy had a purpose. The enemy had a vision. And his, his, his assignment was to come along to abort, to abandon, to kill the destiny of praise and its generations, all generations after it. After all, Satan was dealt his final blow by Jesus, the lion from the tribe of Judah. Glory to God, hallelujah. When Jesus came on the scene, Satan received a fatal blow that caused him to not be able to impact God's people as he did before. Now it's up to us as children of Israel. We're the symbolic children of Israel today who have been born again anew by the Spirit of God are to teach and preach the Word of God to our children that they would know God for themselves and be raised up following the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lion of the tribe of Judah Jesus would be the lion of the tribe of Judah who will rise up and destroy the enemy. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and loose the, its seven seals. That's talking about Revelations, the seven seals. Revelation 5 and 5. God always destined that one from the tribe of Judah would destroy the enemy. After Leah would have loved to destroy every legitimate authority to the throne, including Jesus, later King Herod 
was obviously influenced by the demonic principalities of Athaliah and Jezebel. Yet another ruler who would attempt to destroy the generations. Did you ever think about that? Athaliah, Jezebel, have the same spirit, the same sign from Emmy, to destroy future generations. King Herod comes along with the same purpose, under the same influence of the same evil spirit, to destroy the generation that Jesus will come from. Yet, another ruler who attempted to destroy the generation, he was informed that there was another king who was prophesied, and he ordered the murder of every male child in Bethlehem. Seeking, devising a plan to cut off the bloodline of Jesus. Clearly two demonic forces were once again working together to destroy the prophetic destiny of Christ and his descendants, which is us. We are the descendants of Jesus Christ. And the enemy knew, if I can get this to be aborted, Kill Jesus as a baby, we would never have received salvation. But God had a plan. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many prophets and rulers, ruling spirits, kings are being aborted on a daily basis? We must pray for the Lord to empower us to defeat this evil anti spirit. Christ stronghold that is destroying the generations. We need to pray against that spirit. There's an assignment, has an assignment to destroy generations. If you allow the enemy to impact your mindset, it will do everything in his power destroy your future generation. The reason why children are being killed early nowadays is that's assignment from the enemy, from the same spirit that's impacting our generation today. Jezebel and Athaliah, they both are still in operation in the church today and in society. And they both still have the same assignment to abort generations. Because they don't want to see God promote his kingdom in the earth as the word says and Jesus to reign in all of our lives. But one thing about God, his word tells us that the gospel is going to be preached all around the world before Christ comes again. And as a child of God, it's your assignment to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ even in your generation to come after you. So your children begin to speak the word of God over them, pray for them, prophesy to them, speak greatness into them, speak destiny, fulfillments of dreams and prophecies in their lives, that God will manifest his power in your children's life to bring them forth to be who he called them to be according to his will. So next week we're going to talk about God preserves a righteous seed. God preserves a righteous seed. Because when you get understanding that we are the seed of Abraham, the blessed seed of Abraham, which are the descendants of Jesus Christ, you find out there's a righteous seed that's connected to your life. And the enemy is threatened by that because that righteous seed is Jesus Christ who's implanted in you. And if the enemy can stop you from walking in your purpose and calling, he can stop you from being who God called you to be. So we got to get to a place to understand that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. If we turn to rise against us in judgment, we, we're able to condemn it by the word of God. So you speak the word over your life and life of your children 
and watch God manifest his power in your life. So many people are bound by the enemy today. You see it in the news, on the television, on the radio. Every day, thousands of people being killed all around the world. Even just on yesterday, it was in the news how Russia bombed Ukraine again and killed people in a hospital. So we have to be prayed of, even with the flooding and things that take place in society today, down in the uh, Texas coast. We need to pray a covering over our family and over our children, that God will protect every individual from dangers and unseen that's connected to your bloodline. And pray for salvation to come into your house. Because God desires that all would be saved and none would perish. So we're going to continue to pray and encourage one another, stay in the word of God, study should us up approved unto God, and work with you not to be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. Study the word of God. Keep the word in your heart. Keep it in your mouth. Don't let it depart from you. And the more you speak the word over yourself, your body, your mind, your soul, your will, your emotion, have to realign yourself up with the word of God. And allow the word of God to begin to produce the fruit of righteousness inside of you to bring forth a harvest of blessings out of your life into the lives of others around you. You have been born anew to be a blessing to many people. God said, I will bless the seed of Abraham that it will be a blessing unto many. And we are today benefactors of the same blessing, the Abrahamic covenant. And we're blessed and highly favored of God. It's up to us to make a decision to walk by faith and not by sight in the promise of God's word. Amen. So as we do each week, you might be on here tonight, don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior. I encourage you to get to know him. Where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. You can receive this new life tonight by just praying this simple prayer as we pray each week. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, known and unknown, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I ask that you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for giving me another chance and saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, son. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. Yeah, I'll show you how to do that one day. How about that? <laughs> my son, so I see you with the camera angles. Dope production. <laughs> Amen. But I thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I'm Pastor Denise and uh, uh, Courtney. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. Pray y'all enjoyed this lesson tonight. Share it with somebody else who might think need to hear this. And I pray that it does bring insight, understanding. I don't know everything, but what I do know, I do try my best to teach anyway. You know, because we all are still learning. We all learn together. If anyone have any questions or comments, you can inbox me on Messenger, and I'll respond to your message, or give me a call at 414-299-6463. Give me a call at either that, that number or inbox me, and I will respond to your, your message accordingly. You all be blessed and continue to stay enriched in the Word of God. Read Genesis chapter 49. It's a really good chapter to read. Really good chapter. And this this all before before um, uh, Moses died, if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna revisit it myself. I gotta revisit that passage again myself. But uh, thank you again for tuning in tonight. So Father, I thank you for this lesson. I pray, oh God, that it be enriched in all of our spirits, bring conviction and change in our hearts, and make us better as we learn how to live and die to ourselves, that we, Father God, will serve you with all our hearts, our soul, our mind, our strength, our will, and our emotions, that you will be glorified. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You all have a great night. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord 
turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and may the Lord give you peace. Until next week, 6 o'clock, our Lord said the same. Um, shalom. Let it be Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49. And I pray you all be blessed on tonight and stay encouraged. And know that I love you and God loves you. And the Lord says the same. We'll resume next week again to continue where we left off at. God preserves a righteous seed. God preserves a righteous seed. Amen. You all have a great night. God bless you, Pastor Cornell.